This is Keith Helwig. I'd like to about, talk about changes I've seen during the course of my career. Now, I've been involved in law enforcement since God was a kid. Uh, it, this October, it'll be 41 years. That takes into account corrections, sheriff's departments, and police departments. During the course of those years, I've noticed a great deal of changes. When I started in corrections, we weren't called correctional officers. This was back in the late 70s during the feel-good phase of our country, and we were known as correctional counselors. Inmates weren't called inmates, they were called residents. In our maximum security facility in Wisconsin, officers didn't wear the traditional police-style uniforms. That was considered too harsh back in the 70s, so they wore a blue blazer, which had a little department patch on it, and that was about it. Well, that little social experiment lasted for maybe a year, two years at the most, before they decided that they needed to go back to the police-style uniform because that's what inmates respected as far as authority. Back then, there was no training in use of force. Back then, there was no training for cell entries. If you had to take an inmate out of a cell, it was basically you took the four biggest guys on your shift and you went in there and grabbed them and took them out by whatever means necessary. Uh, we had handcuffs called the claw that looked like a, a ratchet that you could put on an inmate's wrist and just tighten it up and pull them out. That's changed. Uh, as I look back on it, that was very, a very cruel thing to do. It was effective, but it wasn't always necessarily the right thing to do. The same thing has occurred in police work. Uh, when I initially entered into law enforcement, of course, we received use of force training. But if I look at the equipment I carried at that time, uh, when I initially entered into it, an officer had a standard six-shot revolver. It was either a 38 or a 357. Generally, it was a 357, but you fired 38 plus P rounds from it. You had an additional 12 rounds on your belt. You had a baton. You had a radio about the size of a brick. You may have had mace, and you had a hickory nightstick. Well, over the years, that's evolved to now carrying a Glock 22 with three extra magazines, 46 rounds, a taser, OC, a baton, a tourniquet. I have more crap around my waist. I don't know how little officers do it. I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four and weigh 250 pounds. I have a lot of real estate that I can cover on my waist. I don't know how these little officers carry everything. I don't know how their backs don't give out. You know, like a lot of old timers, I have problems with, with my hips or I have problems with my lower back. And it's from hauling this crap around all my life. But it's a necessary part. There isn't a single thing on my belt that I don't need on my belt. Now, that's not to say that I've used everything on my belt. I've, I've used my firearm when I've had to dispatch animals. I've never had to shoot another person. I have used my OC. I have used a taser. I've used a baton. Uh, I haven't used a tourniquet, but everything is there not simply because I might need it. It's simply there because if I do need it, I want it. I'd rather not need it and have it there than need it and not have it. It's the same thing in corrections. Uh, before I left the Department of Corrections, they made sure that each and every officer in the state of Wisconsin was uh, certified with pepper spray and each officer was issued pepper spray to carry on duty and how, taught how to utilize that pepper spray. Supervisors were given tasers. Uh, to me, the taser is one of the greatest tools on our belt, whether it's in corrections or law enforcement. Through the years, there have been a lot of changes. We're advancing constantly. Uh, now the big thing is going to body cams everywhere. Once again, I don't think this is a bad thing. Uh, 20 years ago when they started putting uh, cameras in the squad cars. Everybody was worried about it. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, on at least two different occasions, the squad car camera and the subsequent microphone that I wear when I use it have saved people, saved me, when people have made false allegations about my actions. As far as I'm concerned, cameras and body cameras are there for our safety, they're there for our protection, and they are a good thing. As law enforcement officers, we need to evolve with the times, whether that becomes uh, being more technically savvy, uh, perhaps having to carry more things than we really think we're ever going to need, 
or just learning new things, we need to roll with it. We need to continue learning. We need to continue advancing. Thank you. Stay safe.